Hi guys, it's Eric here and I've got some great news. These are difficult times for many of us. Everybody's locked down, stuck at home and wondering what to do with themselves. I'm in exactly the same situation myself and over the past couple of weeks I've been editing my latest pastel masterclass video which is about painting the tropical rainforest, a painting I actually did seven years ago. Now I was intending to release this as a DVD for sale on my website. But I've also been searching for ways in which I might be able to help make a positive contribution to people's lives during this difficult time. And so I've decided not to sell this video, but to give it away completely free on YouTube. So I hope you will enjoy it. I hope it will help with your art and I hope it will inspire you and help us all to get through this lockdown period. All I'd ask in return is that you please remember to subscribe, like the video and share it with anyone who you think might benefit from it during this difficult time. It's a seven part series and what I'm going to do is release an episode every couple of days. So head on down to the YouTube channel now and you'll find the first two episodes are ready and waiting for you there. Or if you're watching this already, time to sit back and enjoy. Pastel. This is going to be a big picture of a rainforest. I went to Khao Sok National Park in uh, Thailand earlier in the year and I got some wonderful shots of uh, some light coming through the trees in the forest. And I want to do something like that on a very big scale in pastel. I thought it would be good for the DVD just to show people how I would go about uh, doing foliage and things. It's not just going to be the rainforest, I'm going to put um, maybe one, maybe two great hornbills in. Not decided where yet, I'll just see what develops as I start to do the painting then I'll, uh, I'll get my inspiration from there when I see it develop. What I'm trying to do when I, when I do begin a painting is, is actually to hit the colour and tone bang on. That, that's what I try to get. Uh, it's, it's not so much about, uh, well, it's nothing to do with detail, uh, a little bit of placement where the things are, obviously it's got to be in the right place. Um, but really what I'm trying to establish early on is tonal value. Tonal value and the correct colours. Colours are beautiful things, colours are, are what make a painting beautiful and you, you've got to put all your effort into um, getting the right colour and the right tone early on because if you don't you're going to ruin the painting it's, it's just not ever going to work no matter how correct it is and how uh, you know in, in other ways like how well drawn it is it, it'll never have that extra quality to it unless you concentrate very early on on establishing the colour and the tone okay just a couple of thoughts before we begin um, reference material. I always think it's really important to have large, clear reference material to work from. Don't work from tiny little grubby little photographs. You've got to see everything clearly. So I always have my reference done very large. Now you'll notice with these photographs of the jungle that the exposure is very, very different. So the greens and the, and the tonal values are all very, very different. So there's quite a challenge there because I don't particularly want to go with the colour scheme I've got. That's probably the nearest that I'll, I'll, I'll stick to. Um, but there's a bit of a balancing act. I want it to be a bit more vibrant, you see. Uh, but it's not really brought out the colours to the extent that I want to bring them out. I've chosen um, some Stabilo Carbothellos to begin with. A range of greens which I'll, which I'll try out very very gently and just see how they look. This is the white Clairefontaine pastel matte surface. I've not used that before 
but I thought it would be interesting to, uh, to do something under light. Uh, there's some strong sunlight coming through on this one and I thought it might be it might make life easier for me if I don't have to pile on too much light. So just a bit of judgment there and I thought I'd try the white. You notice that I always tape Clairefontaine pastel map to a piece of MDF which is cut about an inch larger than the than the sheet of pastel map all the way around and then tape it on so it's a good solid rigid surface to work on. The last thing you want is, is to work on um, pastel mat that's just loose because you'll just buckle up the edges and spoil it. So it's always a good idea to tape it to a board. Um, and then we'll just gently now apply some colour and see, uh, see what happens. If you're completely new to pastels and you might first want to learn a little bit about the materials that I use, then don't worry, there's a whole segment on that in part four of this DVD set. Otherwise, let's dive straight in and get this painting started. Just very gently, just to blend in. Particularly up there in this top bit, uh, I don't want to put a lot of pastel down. I, I want to keep it very, very, um, very, very fine because there's going to be maybe some white that, that gets pushed across the top of it. So certainly don't want a lot of pastel getting in the way. It's just to establish where this bank of trees is. That's the important part. Okay, two colours here. This is the process of layering. When I mix one colour by layering one colour on top of another, and you get a combination of the two colours. I use this a lot because sometimes you can't find the exact colour that you're looking for. So you have to mix it like this. Different colours. And I'm by no means finished here. There will be many, many other colours go on top of this. And the final result is the mixture of all the colours working together. But this bluey green tone will be quite a good base to start with for my jungle colours. The key to the success of this painting is going to be this area here. Getting the right transition in colour and tone between here and up here. That's, that's the absolute key to the whole painting. And that's, I'm taking my time, just building it up very, very gently until I feel that I've got the colour and the tone exactly right. And then it should be straightforward because this then will guide me for the, for the rest of the entire painting. And I've come to the conclusion that at this stage, it's best to just draw in the shadows. Like this, where there's shadowy zones. Them a little. I'm going to take a deeper green put that in. Then 
blend into a line a bit. Then we've got this dark base tone to work with. Okay, there's been a slight change in colour scheme. Uh, these are the sort of things you go through at the beginning, just finalising what are the actual, the best base colours. And sometimes it takes, it takes time, you have to actually start doing it before you sort of realise it's going in, it's going a little bit too dark or a little bit too blue. My final choice for doing these background base colours are these three. It's the Stabilo Carbothellos 585, 770 and 590. I've chosen these three so mixed together they, they do make the best base tone. Put in little bits of dark, little bits of dark in, making the outline of the branches. Putting some of the green over. Like this. And then maybe a little bit of the yellower brownie, more brown green. Just mixing them in. And that's a better base tone. Of course. There's going to be a lot of white goes onto this, which will throw it back. But I don't really need to do that yet until I know higher up the values. But there you are. The, the, these are just basic base tones that I'm getting in for the, at this stage.
It's always best to go slowly with pastels, I think. You've got to watch the layering, you see. If you go in heavy at the beginning, you can, you can leave too much dust. And if you have to correct things, then things can get a little bit tricky. So what I do is I always feel my way in very, very slowly. Um, a layer within a layer, if you like. I do a first layer that's very light uh, and then if there's a mistake, if something needs correcting, it's not such a big deal. I can just go over it or to rub it out. And the beauty of that is, by the time I get to use thicker, stronger pastel strokes, then I know that everything's correct. I know it's right, so I can proceed in a very confident manner.
This was the trickiest part of the whole painting, really. It's not easy to glaze pastels this way. If you apply too much pressure, you're going to disturb the layers underneath. You have to be very, very smooth and gentle with how you smooth that fine layer of one colour over another. It may take a little practice, but um, hopefully I'm demonstrating here that uh, it is possible to do this. Pastels can be used in a very transparent way. It's very different working pastels for on a landscape rather than on something small and finely detailed like the head of a big cat. Here we get to the detail a lot later. There's a lot of background work to be put in first in a, in a landscape, setting the colours, the tones, the mood of the painting. And particularly when the painting is as large as this one is, it takes a little a little time so when you're doing something like this you have to remind yourself that it's a longer project and prepare yourself mentally for that longer task
Notice once again that everything I do has been very, very light. No strong strokes because this is a multi-layering process. So if we put too much dust on, everything will just blend together and become like mud. The reason this is working for me is because the layers are so light and I'm going to utilize many, many layers until this is right. So you've got to be economical with the amount of pastel that you lay down. So key things here, very, very gentle. All that blending that you're seeing now is such a, a feather light touch. Trust me, no heavy strokes. And then that gives you the ability to add more layers and to gradually build things up in exactly the way you want them. As with all blending, there is going to be some loss of detail. But that's a variable that we've got control of here. We do actually want to lose some of the detail because this is in the background. So there's, we want a slight sense that things are a little bit out of focus. <laughs> 